good evening to you all. Um, hello. hello, hello. Uh, my name is Lisa and this is Joy and we are back to do another kind of broad spectrum TFK Live where we take your questions. Lots of them. Lots and lots of questions, um, which is great. We love to see it um, and we get to give you yarn suggestions, pattern suggestions, little tips and tricks and bits of advice. So it's a little fun bit things. like you get to see lovely fun things too. Fun things, new things, new happy things, things, yarny things. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yes, it's a little bit like just being able to wander into your local yarn shop and rock up and have have the attention of uh, two two of us. Two of us. Two of us. Yes. So uh, what we'll do is we will 100% cover Please. the uh, pre-submitted questions first and then if we have any time we can take some on the fly at the end. Yeah. Um, although there are quite a few. There are quite, quite a, a few. few. Quite a quite few. Quite a few. So um, and it's a case this week of uh, not what has Joy been knitting lately but what has Jenny been knitting lately? Yes. <laughs> so yes, 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 yes. So, yes, yes. so, so, so you, you know, you hold, hold, hold. <laughs> Um, oh, I think they have seen it. They might have seen it. They might have seen it. But some people might be joining us for the first time and might not know who Jenny is even. There you go. So we know who, who she is. Who is Jenny? Jenny is uh, the dyer behind Townhouse Yarns. Uh, happens to be my sister as well. My and sister. Uh, she had been on a three-year knitting hiatus and uh, has come back with a bang. Come back with a bang. And, um, and you know why that was? Why? She came into the shop to help out on a Saturday and she got the bug again mojo returned yes. for sure for sure and like and crazy and then we went to cologne as well to the trade yeah, well. show and lots of inspiration was there as well so um it's always good to kind of just get together with yarny people and have it chats is. and do that so i'm going to do a quick mic check how is the sound we've Can replaced you hear us? the microphones how is the sound let us know um and if it is your first time joining us you are extremely welcome if you have been watching from the very start since we started doing all this mad stuff um then it's great to have you back it's absolutely fantastic um and if you're watching back even if you don't watch live um i know a lot of people do uh tune in on their commutes or yeah. over the weekend with a cup of tea over a cup of coffee um, and, and a little oh, bit of knitting and oh watch yeah yeah us do funny things I, i'm looking forward to a bit of that over the weekend or it might be uh yeah. might be a bit more spinning happening i know mm. what's happening i got well jenny got her knitting mojo back and i got my spinning mojo back mm. so um mm. yay sound is perfect Woohoo! um and yeah i just uh what happened i was just seeing lots of people kind of getting like little weaving things and carding things and stuff yeah, from ashford yeah. and like got like actually my, my pal over in the states has started uh, she was looking at like carding fibers yeah. and wanted to do like a, a local spinning course and stuff like that i couldn't get over to join her um but uh yeah so i said no i'm just gonna have to get the spinning no more holidays out. for you no 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 <laughs> i know not let leave the country for a little while um so although i'm seeing people joining us from all the way around the world so it's delightful oh, Ohio. Ohio. I used to live That's there. You were in Ohio, yeah. I, I really was. forget that it was Columbus, Ohio. Ohio. Columbus. And there used to be a big knitting event there as well. TNA. Oh, yeah. TNA. I don't know if they still do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, hurry. Uh, Matthew is knitting his first socks while watching us. Yes. Good for you. Yes. It's very much a sock society thing happening mm -hmm. now this, uh, mm -hmm. over the last little while. Yeah. Um, seen some great new new bits and pieces and people getting very enthusiastic and, and we got some lovely new sock books in mm -hmm. we got new sock we books did. restocked on the unique sock yarns those self-striping yep. ones that everybody was looking for there's a whole, a whole load of them just there yep. um so oh and hello hello to you in cologne hello um so uh well yeah we have a lot of things to cover there's the new spring yeah. summer yarns stop talking stop talking <laughs> start showing things now but <coughs> we have to do from at the very top this is joy's beautiful love, oh, note, love note sweater love note sweater and this is my uh somewhat vintage chicane by uh jimmy nets i say vintage uh, we did a knit along for this back in 2016 i oh think my God, did you yeah i didn't know about that Ooh. that was before my um, time no way uh, so it was, yeah, it was one of those, and it's it's just a fab thing, and I, I it had been sitting it's in my so wardrobe lovely. awaiting a little fix, awaiting a little fix for a while because um, if you look at the arms down here, um, the the pieces are just joined together by these little they're they're not yeah. functional buttons, they're sewn together, yeah. um, but I didn't like that there wasn't enough fabric sort of ah, there, gotcha. um, and yeah, the neck was gone too wide and stuff, so yeah. I, I eventually last week fixed it, so I said. Gosh, you're really into getting back to things. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Ooh, uh, spring. Uh, and we've got socks always on the go. And we've got more questions, <laughs> but we've got to do the pre submitted ones first. So, um, what has Jenny been knitting lately? Now you can show it. Now you can show it. 
You I may have seen this already. I have to my friend over here. Sorry. <laughs> da -da -da. Look so, at this beautiful sweater. It is an ode to fluff. Um, Even though it's just got the fluff just here. Yeah. Uh, it is the effervescent sweater by Amy Scher. Um, and Jenny, uh, it was a combination. She was dyeing some new colors in the townhouse yarns range um, and just fell in love with this pattern when it sort of Instagram threw it up she for did, her one day yeah. um, and said, well, that is that is the right one for the Pegasus colorway. So it is absolutely divine. This is Fade Street 4-ply as the main body um, yarn. And then you knit, you knit all of it, knit it from the bottom up, knit the start of the sleeves, the start of the other sleeve, join it all together and go lacy um, uh, all the way up to the neckline. And then you can add on the ruffle at the end if you want. You don't yeah. have to, you don't yeah. have to, but if you want, you can add it in. Some this of us is aren't frilly people. <laughs> <laughs> she, I mean, she's, she's but it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. 100% embracing it. 100% embracing it. So it's yeah. absolutely stunning. It's meant to be cropped. It's meant to be kind of cut on the yeah. sleeves. Um, and because so many of you loved it when we featured it last week, we now, as of about 10 minutes ago, have kits up on the website for it okay pre, so pre-orders pre-orders it has to be done on a pre-order because basically everybody really liked this shade so much it's that it gone. all sold out <laughs> it all sold out um so jen i'll oh, stop swinging out of her sweater um has uh put up three colors for pre-order which is pegasus this is the original one in pegasus i'm just gonna like show you a little bit more detail there Ooh, look at it isn't it just fab it's um, really beautiful. and cove which is a lovely kind of soft aqua blue and then Moonbeam, which is kind of gray tones with little speckles through it, but still has a little bit pinky mm -hmm, and purpley. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, it's the color that we were doing the My Socks follow along in. So it's just nothing that's going to compete with the lace, yeah. right? You know, because there's quite a bit of detail in lace, although Jen says that it is, uh, you can get into the rhythm of it, you know, after a little while, like sometimes. Some of these things are intuitive, as I call them. Exactly, can exactly. So there are three colorways of this kit with the Happy Lace available for pre-order. Um, so you can check them out if you pop on over to the website. I but stay with us for now and pop on over to the website she's later. Go, she's going to watch us from the side. She's, there's only room for there's only room for two presenters <laughs> in this in this TIK show. Um, so that is that. We also have um, the Dublin Memory Socks. Will we show what Ashling has been? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, because uh, yeah, we just gotta. We do, do, do a little roundup of staff projects. Um, so these, look at those. Or this, in fact, it's a one size. This not these, those. Um, but this is our shop sample of the Dublin Memories socks by Zanette Knits. Zanette Knits. Um, and it's so, so cool. It's got um, the base yarn or the main, main color yarn is Kremka Soul One Wool Lazy Linen. Lazy Linen. So it's mm -hmm. not, it's. The linen is what gives it longevity as opposed and to strength. nylon. Yeah, totally natural uh, sock yarn. And then your yeah, your detailing so is you done with uh, Chimera, mm -hmm. Chimera, <laughs> Chimera by River Knits. Um, and we have a couple of kits for these as well yeah. on the website. So a few different, uh, but it doesn't that work out so well really with the green? Does. And it's got the little flecks of pink through it, the little bits of yellow, um, and it just shows yeah. off that really detailing pretty. so nice but it means um for the, the my first sock follow along people and everything like that that the heel is a bit of a different heel but definitely one that you could kind of take on once yeah. you've managed or, or mastered your first uh, your short row heels um but your foot and all of the shaping is done first you don't need to worry about different stitch patterning or the color no. work and then it's just when you're getting into the leg that you can you can add your detail and I'm sure that's what people are going to see anyway it's toe right? is it yeah. Toe? yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, so that is the uh, Dublin Memories socks. Yeah, cool. it's kind of like a Celtic sort of knot work it is, one, isn't it? Nice. Yeah, yeah, I like and it. And I think that really shows it off very well. It right. does. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they picked well. They were putting yes. together color combinations because then what happened was the pattern came out and the original color of Chimera was discontinued. Ah. Oh. God uh, darn it. Uh, At least when so you do that. I know, I know. <laughs> and it was very pretty. But then there's loads of other options, yeah. loads of other options. Uh, okay, so questions. Let's do your questions. We got a good few, a good few coming up um, today. Um, now, and in fact, because we were featuring the effervescent pullover, uh, we're going to start with Jacqueline Allen, um, who was saying okay. that she was looking for lace yoke sweaters for fingering weight yarns. 
because she was inspired by Jenny's recent sweater and wanted to make something out of uh, Tannhäuser Yarns Tara in Pure Majesty or Seafoam. So we are going to do, we kind of came up with two that we thought yeah. might work for those colors. I'll just do the turnaround on the camera, I think, yeah. so you can see the pattern details and everybody can uh, understand what we're showing you at the same time. Yeah. Um, and then we hope that the Instagram gods, because every time uh, I do this, um, behave may themselves. The gods be, the fourth <laughs> be with you. The fourth. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is it, no, is it May the fourth be here tomorrow? <laughs> no, yesterday. Oh, goodness. No, I do not know. Today's the fourth. Is it? Okay. Okay. Now we've got light, says Lisa. Camera oh, action. Lights, camera action, and lots of shadows, unfortunately. But here we go. Um, I'll try and keep it out of the out of the mix here. So this one here is um, by Kate Davies, um, an absolutely gorgeous lace yoke, a little bit like what you've got on at the yep. moment, but in um, a four ply. But in a four ply, yes. Yeah. So it's T or E I T by Kate Davies, um, and as suggestion number one, and then look at this one. Oh, that's nice. Isn't that nice? Loads of lights there, but it's Il I think it's I L H A Ilha by yeah. Orlan Suche. Um, and any of these patterns that we're featuring now, you can find over on Ravelry. Ravelry. Um, and we will always make sure that we find ones that are four or five star reviewed and have had good, yep. good number of projects and all that sort of stuff. But that's a really nice detail. So again, if you're not into, um, <laughs> oh, thank goodness. As they said, wow, it works. They usually lose us when we turn <laughs> around. So thank you, Vicar. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I really like that. I haven't come across that one before. No, I like so that one. I love I've always, I've always kind of had my eye on the Kate Davies one. I have. To yeah, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be a lovely four ply version as well. Yeah. That would be very nice. So, um, but usually I can slide. Let me see. We will go back to the Kate Davies. Yeah. For a comparison, but hopefully one of those, uh, Jacqueline, will catch your eye. Um, I think that in the Tara would be yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, would be gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And in the Pure Majesty. Woo. Great. Beautiful. Question Beautiful. number one done. So what have we got? Next is, um, oh yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to turn around. I'm going to deal with these ones. And then we'll stay turned around. So I'm not going to jump. Okay. okay. So this one is from Paddington Bear 8. And you were wondering for, or you were looking for, um, suggestions for DK or uh, no DK weight sweater that is ribbed or in brioche so we've got a couple here sizzle pop crush nine and vertical stripes sweaters and this is number oh one yes I saw that that's <gasps> lovely so that is sizzle pop by Leslie Ann Robinson mm -hmm. um, absolutely divine detailing oh, up here um, but easy breezy for the body so you mm -hmm. get a little bit of yeah. a, a a break if you didn't mm -hmm. want to focus for too long um and then it's all dk weight all of these um this one is vertical stripes sweater <coughs> by petite knit yeah um definitely filling the dk ribbed yep. brief there yeah. um liking that and nice easy breezy knitting there and then oh and a joanna Ooh. Mm. I love that we get to see, like, you know, you, you might not be thinking currently about a brioche rib sweater, and then <laughs> suddenly somebody else thinks about it, and you're like, ooh. Mm. Um, so that's Crush by Anna Joanna, and they're all double knit. So uh, hopefully that will inspire you, and as we said, all of those available on Ravelry too. Okay, and done, done, done. Oh, yay, let's do a little chat about leftovers. So this is Natalie Gallagher, and Natalie was wondering, have we any ideas for using up leftovers, mainly fingering weight? But the problem is that you're not that into stripes. <laughs> hmm. Okay, you've done a I've few done things about your little animals. Have we got any of them going I around? Ooh. Ooh, where'd they go? Up they're upstairs. Oh, I won't walk too far away from the thing yeah. as well. Yeah. Um. Um, I've done a lot with leftovers. I've made the, I'm oh, sorry, it's the same mm -hmm. thing again, the striped Esjan. Stripes. Yeah, and I know, but they work. It's so. not, yeah, that, so if you're not into stripes, but there is lace on it. Mm -hmm. Also, the manis, mm. which I made two of from leftovers. Yes, I love that. It's chevrons as opposed to straight yes. stripes. So, yeah, yes. we do like manis. Yes. Well, yes. here's a few that we came up with. So, instead of, although these are kind of striped, this is um, a sweater that you knit plain, and then you use your leftovers ah. and you embroider yes, these yes, details yes. in afterwards. Do you see that? So you're actually just taking a, uh, a darning needle and your odds and ends, 
um, and in this case in the adult garment they've just done it around the top yoke but in the um, little kids one just at the front look at that isn't that so sweet um, so that's wool and pine and wool and pine have a good few scrappy projects yes um, a good few things that um, are, are good for leftovers um, let's see and tin can knits do um, a yoke sweater I think it's called embers Embers. And oh it's got yeah. all like uh, little boxes of colour. So oh, you I only know use very one. small amounts. Yes. And but that's you get what a we very good effect. That kind of idea. Yeah, but we were thinking even odds and ends in, uh, in a, not a striped yoke, do you know? Yeah. But like that yeah. you can kind of mix them into yeah. an otherwise plain sweater. Yeah. Um, so that is the throw over by Andrea Mowry. And. Marling is another option. It is. Okay, if you're not going into stripes, you could color block yep. with marling. So um, it, we don't have the kind of full the full shawl out there, but you can see you could have a lot of fun just kind of using up yeah. and, and, and he, changing. And he has a whole load of videos. Oh yeah, Stephen West about marling and how to marl. And Excellent. And Excellent. So that for the stripes, the stripes averse, um, then you could do that and. This is another one from Wool well, and you Pine. Made one of those. I did. I really enjoyed making it. So I mean, it's stripes, but it's broken stripes. Yeah, and I wouldn't call that stripes so much as no, mixed color. Exactly, just yeah. like a little mosaic effect, yeah, isn't it? You it know, it is. It is. Um, it's lovely. So this is fantastic for using up little small amounts of odds and ends as well. So they have a whole series of sea glass patterns. Uh, this is the sea glass hat. There's the sea glass tea, and there's the sea glass sea glass. Sweater, sweater. <laughs> um, and you do this thing called a magic knot in it to yeah. help um, work, you know, work in the very to buy all your little odds and ends and mm -hmm. stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, I, I really do like that as well. So, yeah, will we talk about? I'm going to find the the one about the uh, yarn combinations and lazy swatches. Oh, so, okay. Um, so Tina swatches. Lucy, I saw you joined us there. Um, and uh, I was sorry, somebody else was asking for the vertical stripe sweater so they can take a screenshot. We can do that. Uh, da, da, da. Sorry, I keep saying someone else because usually um, usernames are really hard to pronounce. So there you go. Go back to the vertical stripe. Oh, sorry, you're Vanessa LD Creed. There you are. You can take a screenshot of that and see. Uh, I hope you can go back to that. So Petite Knit is a winner usually an awful lot of the time here. Um, now, so Tina Lucy was asking, is there rules? for combining, I'll bring some light around here again, uh, rules for combining yarns, if you're going to hold them together. So usually like fluff with um, like a four ply or a, any, any, <laughs> any combination of, uh, of different thicknesses and mm -hmm. textures and everything. Mm -hmm. But I think what you're more concerned about was color because you uh, have a <coughs> very bright blue and you were wondering like what happens when you mix it with like a lilac or an indigo um and there's there is a way to tell that you do need a little bit of to work with yeah um but if you want to get some some more general philosophy tin can knits mm -hmm. have if you look at their tutorials about the love note sweater um they have a whole thing going on about what different fluff mohair combinations will yeah. do to a main and whether yarn. and also whether to have your for certainly for what I'm wearing. Yes. Um, somebody, I think Kira Cowop mentioned. Oops. Sorry, I keep hitting okay. the thing. No, now, these these aren't the colours I used in my love note, but it's very similar to this. Mm -hmm. I use synth sea foam, so I had a really light background. Yes. And then I had lock, which is kind of a mix of blues and greens to go uh, with that. And of course, then I got this. So if you look at the tin can knits um, videos, they kind of go into whether to have the light color as your four ply or whether to have your fluff kind of yeah. controlling. I think when you did yours, you had it the other way around. I had it, yeah. My so it's I had really a interesting yeah. what you get. Yeah. So anyway, that's... And how it all comes together. Yeah. But if you happened to have a little bit and you were wondering and you wanted to kind of check and get an impression without making whole swatches. Now, I recommend swatching. I always recommend swatching. But for some reason, people don't like it. <laughs> um, I can't imagine why. I'm well, you all want to get into your projects and get started and just work away. So 
if you do have a little bit, and particularly, let's say, for leftover projects, and you're wondering, see, when you have leftovers and you can't find the start or the end of it is a problem <laughs> as well. There we go. Um, and you're kind of going, are those two colours together going to work? There's a thing called a lazy swatch. The, <laughs> the fan That's is blowing the yarn everywhere. Okay. And the lazy swatch, you might want to do it around actually a piece of card or something like that, but it doesn't really matter. In this case, we're taking a ruler and we're going to go round and round and round and round and round. And it will give you an impression of how the two colors behave together. Um, because if you want to pop in your sleeve again there, Joy, uh, for a second, you'll see like you don't get a consistent, like sometimes the darker color comes more through. Sometimes this is the, the nature of marling, you know, yeah. that some, sometimes one of the colors is a little bit more to the back or a little bit to the front. So um, it, isn't, uh, it isn't like every stitch has behaved no, in the same no. way. Um, you do get a lovely marley kind of effect. Yes. But wrapping them around like that and playing with even similar colors in your stash, if you're mm -hmm. looking at um, like two online that you want to buy for a new project, try and find something similar and kind of see how you think that that will behave. And then the last tip on that front, sorry, I had loads of different scrap yarns to show you, but we probably won't, won't have time to go through it, um, <laughs> the, is the color wheel. Um, and generally speaking, where am I gone, Tini? Uh, what we don't want to do is mix the two colors that are opposite each other in the color wheel unless you want brown so oh. yes so if you work those two together you generally you you're yeah. you run the risk of running into just sort of mucky shades oh. so um well, uh, i didn't know that there you go so it's it's just kind of a couple of like starting points mm -hmm. but really how you're going to know whether something works or yeah. not is to swatch is to swatch there you go or do a lazy swatch um and then uh, chief of stash is saying little red kettlehead did a fabulous series of posts on a variety of mohair colors on a single base color so yeah. there you go be sure to check yeah. that out so little 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 red kettlehead um and oh i can't say that s-y-s-l-e or i-g-e-t also has examples and yeah, and uh, Nitterone is saying, recommending a swatch because it's yeah, just so you're unpredictable. Not, you're never going to know until you but actually knit them. So if, really. you, if you were Tina Lissy, you can vote. So A, B, which one would you choose? <laughs> <laughs> While I try You'd and You'd get fight. a completely different sweater. You would. All blues or else this lovely kind of marley. I don't know. It would be, I think that would be really lovely. Isn't it nice? Yeah. 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 So basically, it's have fun with it. That's it. Yes. That's it. And nah. we've all made, I don't, know those, I don't know how many love notes we've all made here. <laughs> and they get some really lovely effects. There you go. You're getting some votes now here. Oh. We've got three Bs, four Bs, and one A. So um, B every time. Oh, oh wow. a lot of flavoring Bs, a lot of flavoring Bs. So there you go. Sometimes we just need to crowdsource an answer. There you <laughs> That's go. what you're getting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, somebody voted for N. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. it'll be it. Uh, oh, there you go, Tina. There you are. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fantastic. So, but it's fun. It's fun. It's definitely, definitely fun to play. Now, on the subject of colors, Mary Ann Barton, we had a little bit of a chat over on Instagram about this because um, you are concerned about changing colors in this amazingly beautiful pattern right here. Oh, which you know. Isn't it just adorable? Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. So it is a Aran Wader worsted weight cardigan in this beautiful rainbow uh, finish. I will get you the name of it now, sorry, because it's not on the image, um, which is called Tulips, and it's a pattern by Lindsay Peckney. Um, on Ravelry um, and what's happening here um, is that uh, Mary is knitting and changing color um, at these sections whoo where'd you go um, but these sections also feature a couple of rows of moss stitch at the changeover okay and in the pattern it says slip the first stitch on a part on the pearl side or the next stitch is the pearl right. and what Mary was worried about is the the yarn of the existing color coming up onto that next row. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay, and kind yeah. of going, oh God, is there a way to actually make the stripes not jog right. in that situation? Um, and the answer, there's, there's good news and bad news. <laughs> the, the good news 
uh, is, or the bad news is that no, not really. Um, I can't think of a way that you would no. change that. But the good news is that at these exposed edges where you might see the changeover, um, you're going to go ahead and pick up stitches afterwards oh, yeah. and you're going to have a border so and that's going to cover them. And if you're, I think these sleeves are knitting around, but if you're not knitting them around, um, you'll just put that into the seam. Yeah. Um, so this is tulips again for anybody interesting in it. It's absolutely fantastic and pretty little thing. I want to make rainbow cardigans, even though there's probably nobody that I can give one to at the moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a better picture of the edge. So uh, oh, you're probably worried really about pretty. it being uh, visible, but you're going to be picking up and working all of these yeah. um, edges. And the sleeves are knitting around. Right. So we have talked before about working, um, picking up stitches. Jogless. Me threads. Well, yeah, but in this case, because it's knit flat, because it's forward and oh, back, sorry. It? Yeah, because it's not a steaked cardigan. Oh, no, yeah. I know. No, no. Oh, I, yeah, I thought you were talking about the sleeves. Oh, the sleeves in the round. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but I th it was the flat piece that I ah, yeah. was worried about. Yeah. So just make sure when you're picking up your stitch that you're going one full stitch in from the edge of your piece, which I was going to just quickly demo on oh, that. Um, this one? Oh, this one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I just need to have a contrasty yarn here. So we did talk about this before. Um, and this is a very curly edge. But let's imagine that you've got different things going on at the edge here and color changes and all that sort of stuff. Sometimes, look at my little kid's needle here. <laughs> uh, sometimes people think picking up stitches is lifting just that very no. le edge leg. And they think that that's going to be better for them, that you're not creating as much bulk at your join point. But what you want to do is go one full stitch in. So a knitting stitch, a knit stitch is made up of two legs. Um, so make sure you are catching both of those when you pick up your stitch. Um, and don't worry about that bulk underneath because you're just going to get a much neater, sorry, having to do this, a much neater edge as a result. So make sure to go one full stitch in and then that stitch that might be in a different color is just going to be hidden underneath your cardigan edging. Is that fair? Yep. I hope that helps, Mary. Uh, okay. Let's see. I think N was neither. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> oh that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> I would take that. That's that okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, yeah, but we do have a tutorial about doing jogless stripes in the round as well. If you, for your sleeves, you want to check that out too. Um, now, what else have we got? Lynn and Cardi. Valerie! We're all sorts of pattern suggestions today. Uh, Valerie is looking for a linen cardigan, a top down linen cardigan pa pattern for wearing over summer dresses. Nothing too lacy, um, but maybe on the cuffs and the bottoms. Okay, so we have three suggestions one in a double knit weight, one is a sport weight, and one in a four ply. And uh, they give us an opportunity to show you some new yarn as well. Um, so fine sand, let's do fine sand first. Ba -ba -da -ba. So that's Heidi Kiramayer, fine sand. And we think that, I mean, there's actually no lace going on. This would be lovely over for summer dresses. Very, very straightforward and simple. Um, and we think that it was with lots of nice linens coming through. Um, but this one, hello, is from Rosarius 4. Um, it's called Alvor. And look, at, it's such a big, plump, squishy ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really good. Um, and it is actually a 50% linen and 50% wool. So possibly more suited for the Irish summer. There you go. Than anything else. Um, but you've got um, how many meters? 310 meters in one squishy, firm, gorgeous ball of this. And there's some really nice colors in it there too. Um, if you wanted to go a little bit more gold, I'll just show two colors for the moment, but they've got, um, they've got a lovely- uh, I'm sorry, I have to oh, show she's this color. Show one. Just look at this fabulous color. I just think it's so gorgeous. That's color 17. <laughs> Beautiful. We've all got our favorites and the new ones. <laughs> and then tail feather is the next suggestion. Um, again by Heidi Caramayer, and that's, I like the, I like the, the bias lines. It's lovely, isn't that? it? Isn't that really, Very really wearable. nice? 
Um, and that one, we reckon, is going to be suitable for Saranda. Would you like to choose your colours in that? Oh, well, this is a new yarn that we're all very tempted mm -hmm. by. I keep picking out colours and going, will I do this, will I do that? But anyway, it's really gorgeous. It says it's a DK. <laughs> But I have my sport <laughs> weight. I have a sport weight even for four ply, heavy four ply. But it's really gorgeous. It's 48% linen, 24% cotton, and then a bit of viscous. But it's, it's really gorgeous. I mean, here we go again with that lovely color. I did <laughs> that. That I am dying to make yeah, something in. It's I, just, I just fiery and color. lively. And, and if you're interested, that's color seven. This one is color 11. I think some of that might have gone home to Jackie. It did. Um, and this one is 17, which I love. And there is a gorgeous blue too. But mm. anyway, this one is color one. Lovely kind of oatmeal. But it's, yeah, we're dying to see how this yeah, knits Yeah, there's up. 10 or 12 shades anyway yeah, in stock. Yeah, a lot yeah, of shades so, yeah. and it really is gorgeous. Definitely was something we caught our, caught our eye in Cologne and we were like, yep. get that on the shelves for sure. Um, and then um, there's again Amber O'Brien and the Ocra cardigan. Um, a little bit. You want to try and zoom in here? You can see there's a nice little bit that of lace is a detail nice little right there, cardigan, isn't, isn't it? it? Just I just like that finish on it. Um, and we think um, our our dear friend BC Garn Lino would be amazing in that with yep. some new colours in that um, too. Yes, we got some lovely new colours. This is one of them. It's lovely kind of a denim blue. That's colour 47. Look at this lovely pink gorgeous for the summer that's color 43 <laughs> i'm just gonna keep firing and colors this on you. Red one. and it's in fact you know that's not far off the red the kind of yeah you know a flame color i'd almost call it so that's it's color 39 and then they did do a darker purple but this is a lovely light kind of a purpley color and it's color 46 and i think it would be absolutely gorgeous and yes tina that green is gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then we had uh, another question. This one is from uh, Dr. Rose McSee, uh, Mac Mac K and Prezi Knits. Sorry, I could line myself up here. Um, but just looking for a few more summer knits. So, uh, who's this one? <laughs> who's, who's that stunning uh, lady right there? It's me with my glasses on because I have no makeup on. I put on my sunglasses. <laughs> works. That works. I love it. <laughs> I'm going to need to get me some fancy glasses. <laughs> um, so this is the floodlight tea that uh, yes. what is Joy been knitting lately. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about this detail okay, up here. This, it's by Tannis Fiber Arts, mm -hmm. and I saw it last year. And if you look at the uh, these these kind of stripes, it, they're actually done in like a either alpaca or a mohair. And I was like, really with mm. with linen. But I decided to try it, and I have to say, it is absolutely gorgeous. It's a lovely pattern, um, lovely shaping. It feels lovely on, um, and you don't need to use the fluffy stuff if you find that bit don't ridiculous. Go fluffy. But um, you could do a stripe of a different color, or you could just do a nice plain, you know, linen-y color. Linen. Uh, in, it's, it's yeah, two nice two linen colors. So um, yeah. But I, I, I definitely have another one in my future if I can ever find the flipping time. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you I got a new one maybe sample actually happening. Maybe one in the. Um, sorry, we didn't show this color. How about one in the Saranda in the blue? Oh, it's going to have to happen. <laughs> Whoops, it's going to have to happen. Funny. But it's a, it really is a lovely pattern and not that difficult at all. And just a lovely feel to it when you put it on. Very good, very good. And then, uh, no, it really is fab. I, can't, I haven't seen it on you properly yet. I know, I know you can't bring everything in. Um, but uh, there is that one. And then we're, we're bringing back chicane. <laughs> so I think that would be, this is another ca candidate yeah. for the Saranda sample yeah. as well. So yeah. um, it's just beautiful. And this one has um, the fully uh, li lined up, Closed. fully sewn, sewn yeah. up yeah. Um, sleeve joints and stuff like that. And that's Jimmy Knits. Um, Eva McHugh is wondering, does the Lino have a kind of metallic sheen to it? No. Nah. Well, I wouldn't say. I mean, under well, this no, light, it does. it does. I suppose it, it has a sheen, but I don't know that I'd call it. Well, yeah, actually, it's kind of catching the light there. We've got a project under there with it. Uh, um, sorry, Arnaby. You yeah. want to show it knit up a little bit more, yeah. This is the Leone knit up in it. 
And I, w I wouldn't think there's a shine on this now, really. No? They called this color gray, but I was sort of thinking it was more, it was a bluey, steel. bluey, bluey gray. Gray yeah. steel. Um, but when you look at it in the bowl, there is a sheen there to is. it. Maybe this some one. of the colors just Maybe have just a bit some more of, the of a verve. Like, look shiny. But this one certainly didn't. No. No, so for Patricia. I can do that. Oh, you? yeah, okay. You, you uh, talk, I'm sure thing. Do. Okay, I'm sure that. I'm sure that. Anybody think I was uh, my own for talking? Um, okay, so Patricia Carolyn Byrne, hi, Patricia. Um, you were looking for, um, I've gone over to Ravelry now, sorry. Um, this pattern, the Wild Child Cardi pattern. Um, and we will show you what that looks like when my iPad catches up with me. There we go. Happy days. So, uh, Patricia, you're looking to make this beautiful cardigan, um, but you weren't keen on this color. Um, you're going to go for something with denims. So, uh, Ashling was here earlier on, and Ashling picked you out some uh, lovely four plies in the Darny range, a little bit of Yaku, and then we kept a pop of color of the yellow. -y. So, even though you want the, the denims, um, we think you're going to need that just for um, a little bit of making mm -hmm. those, those flower mm -hmm. shapes pop. Um, so, do you want to call colour numbers out there? Yeah. So we have the Yaku, which now that's a real denim colour. I love this colour. It's colour blah and it's 1831. You can see that, it's really gorgeous. Then the Darnie in this lovely pale blue and that's colour 8815. And this gorgeous colour too, kind of um, tealy colour, 8808. And this is the gold, is 8802. And the navy blue is 8809. Whoops, a daisy, sorry. Keep banging up. <laughs> <laughs> it gets in the way. 8813. So, yeah, it's, I think that'd be really nice on that color. It'd be gorgeous, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah, so okay. loads of fun to be had with those gorgeous shades. Hopefully that meets the denim brief. There you go. Um, and, and thank you for your questions. Um, so we've got Mac, uh, Mac and um, but look at this. Oh. <gasps> I just, there's always one that just really, really catches the eye. So this is the Idaho Sunset Sweater by Kathleen Tor Torarski. Um, and it uses a light fingering weight alpaca blend uh, for this amazing color combination. Um, now, we could probably almost do this exact one if all of the colors of BC Garn Baby Alpaca were in stock because we definitely have a darker teal in the range and a hot pink, but they're just on back order at the moment. So um, it is, this is the combo. You were saying not necessarily these exact shades. So this is the combination that we've come up with. So from the sleeves down, let's do that. You've got the uh, lovely Forest Green um, and that is color uh, 119. And then we've got the orange, which is color 38. I'll zoom the camera back up a bit, a little bit, and see if we can uh, do that. And then you're into a much brighter blue, but I think that works really well. Um, so it's color 69. Uh, next up, apple green, um, color 44. And then we're into a zip, a zip, zip of red. Um, fire red, hey, there you go. fire red, uh, and that's color five. So. Just show that again. Gorgeous Idaho really sunset. Gorgeous. Isn't it fabulous? I really like it. And this is the color combination that we have for you in BC Garn, Baby Alpaca. Um, and uh, if you want to hang, if you do want to hang tight, oh my God, I just feel a kit coming on. Um, <laughs> then, uh, we definitely have this hot pink as it yes. comes in the range and this darker teal as well. Um, maybe we just don't have that. Quite neon orange. They have a neon orange. That's a bit of a miss. That's a bit of a miss. Oh. But yeah. there is a there is a bright yellow, like a canary there yellow, is. in there as there well. Is. So have a look. Definitely, this is BC Garn Baby Alpaca is the right match for that sweater, and there's loads of really really lovely shades in it as well. So yeah. um, I really hope that helps. I but totally. oh, I'm so tempted to make that. Mm. Uh, if only there was more time um, in the day. So we had a. General request from Molly Rose for uh, blankets and throw patterns. Um, and we did lean a little bit on baby blanket styles that, that can be modified upwards. Um, because look at this, Vivid by Tin Can Knits. You can make these lovely lacy squares. They're knit from the center out, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, yeah and you can make lovely. as many 
of these squares in really any weight of yarn yep. as well that you Just like. match your needles to your yarn. Exactly, so you can keep going. So that's Vivid by Tink Knits being one of our favorites. Um, and then they do the bounce blanket as well. A little cutie with mm. the hair. That's, the that'll be a good head. one for leftovers too. Very good one for leftovers. Mm. So if you can gradient mm. your leftovers, but then if you're not into stripes, it's not good. Gotcha. No, no, <laughs> so no. uh, that's one of those. Um, then we have the beginner baby blanket kit, um, uh, or sorry, the beginner baby blanket. We usually have kits for this. I'd say one of the colors is probably out of stock, yeah. which knocks the kit out. Mm. Um, but we could definitely put together a really nice combination for you. And that, if you wanted to message us, we can show you some other options. Um, and then on a very different note, there's the Merin blanket, M-E-R-R-I-N, sorry, I should have sh named my image so it would come up properly, um, but it's by Trina Murphy, and just look at that texture okay, and lovely. those details. If you wanted to make more of a, a throw for your couch, something yeah. more textural. Um, very nice. I that's fabulous though, isn't it? It is yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. So I love what we come across sometimes. So it's M-E-R-R-I-N, the Merrin Blanket is that one right there. Loads of ideas today, loads and loads and loads. Um, I think we better turn around for a little while, will we? Yeah. yeah. You've been looking at the screen for a bit. Um, so turn, you can look at the ceiling. Yeah, we're back. Hello, hello, hello. Um, so, <laughs> hi Ashley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the first baby blanket again, please. I can do that very quickly. Um, which was... Oh, that was a lovely square one. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the, of squares, I should say. So, it's Vivid by Tin Can Knits. V-I-V-I-D. Um, and it has those lovely lacy ones that are knit from the center out. Okay. So, we're going to do general stuff. Um, we have got... Um, do, do, do Big Project Knitting is the title um, okay. but it's basically um, Pippi is looking to do uh, their first sweater and was wondering how to go about measuring um, to work out their sizing and how much wool to buy. Joy you have the floor. Ah. <laughs> measuring. Mm. Mm. Well actually most patterns these days thank goodness give you a finished you know they actually tell you what the sizing is yes. and they also generally no, I don't mean just the size of you as opposed to the <laughs> the sweater and they also will give you how much ease the designer would like you to have so say like you're a 34 inch chest um, and the designer says you would need two or three inches ease so you look at the schematic yeah. because they will tell you what's what you know what the finished jumper will measure so say for me like I'm a 34 and it says you would need four inches say four inches so I look at the size that's closest to 38 finished width. So that's how I do it. Um, how you choose your sizing, yeah. 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 And um, but most patterns nowadays are really good about that. So, mm -hmm. cause I know sometimes you look and it says, well, the medium is a 36. What does that mean? Is it going to finish at a 36 or is it to fit a 36? Which yeah. are two different things, definitely two different things. So look what the designer says about ease and measure yourself and then look at what you want the finished garment to end up as. Yeah, yeah. And yep. if you're not sure about the fit that you're looking for, <laughs> if you're not sure about the fit that you're looking for, um, try and measure a sweater that fits you well. That's a similar style sweater. It's not one like this because then, yeah, it's yeah. going to get a difference. Um, but um, pick out something out of your wardrobe that, that you like, you know, that has room underneath it if you're going to mm -hmm. wear layers and everything and measure that and then choose the finished measurement size of the garment based on that. And then I say patterns being, or if it's a good pattern, it should absolutely give yeah. you the number of meters of yarn that you need for your size, for the size yeah. that you've chosen. And then you can go and select that um, by paying close attention to the labels <laughs> on the yarn. So you don't have to use the exact same yarn that's no. in the pattern. Um, but you do have to be careful, like in the way some patterns will say, well, four skeins mm -hmm. of whatever they used. Uh, well, you need to check the yardage. Mm -hmm. So go by yardage as opposed to four skeins or five skeins. Yeah, not mm -hmm. by, like if they said four screen, 400 grams, you know, four by 100 yeah. grams, like that's, yeah. the yarns are not made equal in no. that regard. So not you have to look at the length. The amount of length you get. Yeah, yeah. 
And you can do, if you want some more guidance and all that, if it's your first sweater, then you can join the My First Sweater follow along, which is a full digital course that we have running. Um, and you can uh, basically be guided along all these, like, you know, those tricky first steps where you're kind of yeah. second guessing yourself a little bit and wondering, you know, know, how do I measure? How do I figure all this out? Um, we have all She'll of that. Tell you. <laughs> all of that um, in uh, a full-on course and the course it comes with a voucher to spend in the shop or online and we'll send you stuff that you need as well so um, and this is one just one of the examples it's a cropped sweater with um, boxy sleeves but there is another one where it's, it's a full length sweater with shaped sleeves so you get loads of different options um, on what you want to make as well stripes or no stripes details around up the top um, and we'll walk you through it um, very good okay so hopefully um, that's been helpful uh, and people are saying nice things about the course so <laughs> thank you so much moving to the side. keep it coming um, no, thank you thank you uh, so but don't be intimidated ask the questions you know just yeah. just reach out to the people's um, and you will be knitting lots of big big projects before you know it Um so now you're here's getting, one. you're getting compliments about the course and if you've done the first sweater and you love it, do the first socks. <laughs> so, okay, promo over. Um, the uh, sorry, it feels weird, <laughs> but it's no. We put a lot of work and a lot of effort you, into you it. You put and, a lot yeah, of work, and into I'm it. delighted that people are, are getting on. Well, no, the feed, it. I have to say, the feedback is really good. Yay. I'm not just saying that, even though probably I'd have to say it, but well, she I was. really mean yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's. And actually, this this kind of falls into uh, like that whole some of the types of questions that you get about it. Uh, or about making top down sweaters and yeah. how because this one is knit from the neck down you're at the first sweater course um, and uh, this is about the cumulus uh, pattern which we had out yep um, ba -ba -ba there we go and so it's from I match you do <laughs> oh, you s it's almost as if you have a theme um, and can you use fingering white yarn for the sock follow along you can yeah we give options for um socks uh, in four ply fingering weight and in DK weight but also you get a pattern that is allows you to plug in numbers and customize for any thickness of yarn you like within reason not like super 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 chunky <laughs> but yes um, so there's a fully customized uh, feature there on the website and a calculator where you can plug in your tension and your measurements of your foot and yeah. it will tell you what and how to measure your foot too and how to measure your foot too yep um, just thought of everything. With, with the lot, there was a few nights lying awake going, what about this one, what about <laughs> that way, and the yeah. um, So <laughs> when we say we want it to be your only sock pattern that you need, that's what we, were, that's what we got. Um, so anyway, back to the stitch equation. Thank you for sending in your question. Um, you would like to make the petite knit cumulus blouse. It's a beautiful one. We really like it. Um, but the extra small size has too much ease. So you're quite petite. Okay. You are petite and you're making it petite knit. Um, so what should you do to modify it so that you, it'll fit your more petite body than the extra okay. small? So I was thinking okay. <laughs> that what you do when you're making a top down rag, if you don't mind holding up and showing the raglan size, okay? So you're working from the neck down and you're making an increase every second row on the sleeve side and on the body side here. So I was thinking as you reach more towards the, uh, the oh. under here, discontinue the body side increases but continue yeah, with your sleeve side idea. increases and that's presuming that your i mean your shoulders and your arms aren't also more more, more petite yeah. you know yeah. um and if they are then you just kind of you'd stop a bit sooner so even though that the on the extra small it might t tell you yeah. to carry on and carry on yeah. just stop a bit sooner so you the beauty is you can try this on as, as you, you go, go so you know yeah. Exactly, and when yeah. you're happy that it's going to meet at your underarm, okay? Yeah. I mean, the numbers numbers are great to have, and they're reassuring and mm -hmm. everything like that. But a top down raglan is a certain formula, and you can stop earlier, and then you know it'll be shorter here, it'll be slimmer yeah. here, and you just continue on down. Now you're shaping shaping in the sleeve, you mm. similarish well, rate, yeah, I but suppose. I mean, the thing you, is know? you could because you can keep trying it on. Yeah, yeah. You can play. Let's say. For the extra small size, it was like 40 stitches and you needed to decrease to 30. Yeah. And it just decreased by just the work 10. Out, just work out. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's very easy for us to say, just do. Just. So I know this is, if you're if you're newish to it. There is, there is a lot of ease. And I mean, this is the yeah. medium and it really is quite big. Yes. So. Yes. So I would say okay. one of those things, kind of pay attention to your shoulders, to yeah. your uh, circumference of your right arm. Here. 
Yeah, and but use something like um, like an extra long cord and knitting or the the barber stitch cords mm -hmm. that you can thread your stitches on and pull it on and and check yeah. the fit as you go and you should yeah. be able to customize from there. But yeah. yeah, might just be a case of paying close attention to which ones are sleeve stitches and which ones are body yeah. stitches, and then going from there. Yeah, sound okay? I think so. Good. I just need verification. Yes. Okay. Cool. Barber cords. That's it. Yes. Um, brilliant. Thank you so much for all the lovely feedback on the courses. It's so nice. Yeah. Um, write a review. Um, <laughs> so okay, I'll stop now. I'll stop now. So hopefully that helped you. Um, and how are we doing on... Okay. Mohair. Um, so we have... Uh, Definia is ripping out a project. We were good ripping, part of good knitting. Um, so ripping out a project that was made with a kind of heavier weight mohair alpaca and silk it's like okay. kind of yeah, fur, furry yarn and is looking for an alternative project to do so handily enough the cumulus blouse is one of ours one. and then ta -da -da -da. Was the i think that would work wouldn't it yeah the elton <laughs> this is the elton by hohi locatelli hohi locatelli and again i think we've all made one here <laughs> <laughs> It's just a lovely, lovely classic cardigan. It really is. I think that should work really nice. So yep. um, because it's a four ply held with a lace weight, you get um, that sort of like stripes. thinner stripes, but you could just use the cumulus that you, you could, have. You could just use the, the, the All shaping the of this because I it is a lovely, so. lovely shaped cardigan. Yes. Now, and um, sorry, quick answer to a simple question, but we're, we're running on. Um, Eva McHugh was wondering about a very nice, nice little question, which is, okay. what are your favorite modifications to make to garments? Hmm. Do, you, do you ever follow the pattern? No, you do, don't you? I do, yeah. kind of. I do. Yeah. Um, I do. Well, sometimes I might change the neck or... Hmm. Yeah, I think I do generally. Well, I mean, I modify yeah. shawls and things like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I we, we kind of had a chat about this and sometimes uh, doing something like a short rows to make a dip hem yes. can be quite nice. That could be, that so this, yeah, this has a cast temple there. Have a little turn around there. So, so the, the back is it's, slight, it's only slight, just a very slightly just longer. A very slight longer. Yeah. At so the if back. you if you had something that had an even hem, you know, sometimes people are all like, oh, I just want a little bit more bum yeah. coverage. Especially you when know. it is, well, this, this isn't the cropped version, but no. when it is a little bit cropped, sometimes you want the back to be longer. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, yeah, that's throwing that in, that's, that's an lot. easy modification to make. Yep. And in fact, a lot of what we're talking about here is short rows, because sometimes yeah. you have, um, you want to raise up the back and the yes. neck. You yep. might have, you might be more well endowed um, mm -hmm. than I am and you need uh, some bust shaping um, and yeah. so there's some some great tutorials out there on how to add a bit of extra length to the front of your sweaters if it's more fitted yes um, generally if things are more oversized you wouldn't necessarily need to worry too no. much about it because knitting is flexible and stretchy um, and and things like well we were saying changing up the colors yep Definitely, we like to play with that. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, doing things that are a little bit unexpected. There adding stripes, adding sparkles, oh, all of that oh sort of sparkles. stuff. sparkles. Um, I haven't done that in yeah. a while. Do oh, that again. I feel a bit of sparkle coming on. Yep. Um, and then a kind of one that I would do a lot if it's not written into the pattern. Sometimes when they're getting you to do some shaping um, and they say decrease or increase, you know, one stitch at either end of the next row and the yep. so many following rows and stuff like that. When they say that thing at either end, mm -hmm. I ignore that. I do it one or in, two stitches in. In, in to get two a nice, stitches yeah. generally in, yeah. yeah, from the edge of the work, yeah. um, and that's uh, this kind of the best example that we could find. But it'll, it's only one stitch in. But doing your decrease or your shaping um, in from the edge will give you this lovely clean line yeah. in before. Um, like if you need to pick up stitches from it later on, if you need to, or if it's just something that just, just gives it, like catches the feature. eye. And feature. Yeah, and if that was wider, if I'd done the shaping like three stitches in, then this column here would actually be thicker and go like mm -hmm. all the way up like that. So um, just because people ask, this is Wee Lima. Wee Lima is the sweater. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's just something to, to kind of yeah, watch out for and generally change up. It's a yes. really nice feature. Nice feature. All right. Let's see. Uh, a special request from Lana and Dina. Can, will we introduce alpaca to the Townhouse Yarns range? I'm saying nothing. I know, I know nothing. something you don't know. 
Watch this space. Watch this space. That's, space. All I'll That's say. it. Yes, yes. There is something new coming, um, and we will shout it from the rooftops as soon as You'll it's ready know to about go. As well. You will. You will. You will. But yes, it's something actually Jenny has been wanting to do for a long time, yeah. and then she saw this, yeah. and there was there was no holding her back. Nope. You're gonna like no. it, is all I can say. So we're, we're trying to make sure we keep our lovely artists here really nice and full, and then she keeps adding more yards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, now, and on the Townhouse Yarns topic, um, Knit and Nat was asking for one or two skein patterns to use with some of the new Townhouse Yarn shades. Oh, so yes, yes. We, t we were looking at Medusa, yep. Medusa scarf, which you can do with um, two skeins. Yep. Um, I will find the Medusa okay. thing. So this is Bloom on this one. It's on um, Clarendon. <laughs> Sorry, can't speak. Anyway, this is Bloom, which is on the lines of Jenny's Toffee Pop, but it has extra. Extra like going you on. You see that lovely teal in and it. Teals but there. anyway, we thought that would be really nice with velvet. So that's the Clarendon. And that's for uh, this pattern here, oh, Medusa by Julie Nitz in Paris. So we got sort of a quite close up of the detail there, but right. we're showing some of the new colors contrasted yep. with some of the older ones. <laughs> anyway, this is mm -hmm. Porfirio on Abbey. Just look at that. Just really beautiful. That's a really nice combination. And holding it with Fade Street in Eha, which is one of our really like just basic gorgeous maybe color so mm -hmm. I think they'd be beautiful together then what did I have then no I think it was this one no <laughs> I'm, I'm lost she's not sure I picked these <laughs> earlier okay so this is in the new Porfirio as well but this time it's you can see the difference on um, Fade Street versus Abbey Fade yeah. Street mm. and I put it with single mauve which I think would really Ooh, yeah. It's completely different kind of, but there is, ooh. And then, mm, Fade Street again, and this is Orna, which if you just look at the colours in it, and I think that would pop beautifully. Oh, wow. With peach, peach, <gasps> peach, 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 which I think is really lovely. I like and it. I, like I say, unfortunately, we don't have Pegasus to show you. So anyway. Everybody took Pegasus yeah. away. Well, Pegasus we showed the beautiful popular. garment. We showed the beautiful garment at the start. Oh, the beautiful um, garment. She can yeah. come in and say goodbye when we're saying goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we have a very popular uh, single skein project here as well. Um, if you just wanted to go for one of those, it's um, a pattern called Close to You by Yustin Oh, that would be lovely. Uh, it's very nice for any of the four plies. Um, and then if you're looking for a simple pattern for... Um, a DK weight than the Derenae Knits, um, which is Andrea Mary. Uh, she has the Everyday Cowl, which is a lovely double knit yarn um, or double knit project for one skinny yarn. Or you could make slipper socks. <laughs> the my first socks fall along. Um, so that is that. Thank you for your question, Knit and That. Um, and we have one last one uh, saved, saved for last because she's uh, an Ankele's. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just I'm whoosh, getting hit by whoosh. the hair. Um, sorry. Anyway, uh, Ankalise was asking um, about uh, yarn suggestions for the Montpellier top in bright, oh, happy Ankylis. colors. Ankalise, yeah. Hi, Ankalise. Hi. So, Ankalise, uh, you might be chatting to you guys on social media. She works from home a lot of yeah. the time, so she doesn't get in here. So we, we'll, we'll do that She's because we've got a few minutes team. left. One of the team. Look at this gorgeous top. I love it. Really, really nice. Um, and it's called Montpellier uh, Ooh, by Anna Fiscum. Nice. Anna Fiscum Sunday. Um, and yeah, isn't what, that sweet? What, what yarn but is that? it is the last of the new summer yarns, the last of the summer wine. Um, oh, this one here. So we got in um, a chunkier, uh, lovely cotton, a kind of lovely ropey texture like that. Um, so it's called Sunset. Um, kind of appropriately um, and they've got some nice like some more pastels and stuff like that but this is just sunshine Ooh. in a ball um, and it is color number 11 um, of 100 percent cotton um, and <laughs> organic as well so um, there's some really nice things and that's for the Montpellier yeah. top so some lovely 
Uh -huh. shades. There she is. She says, getting ready for the summer. Yeah, hey, yes. It's coming. I like it. I like it. It'll be gorgeous. Oh, this lovely rusty know, color as well. The rusty color. Actually, it's I'll really just nice. bring in the rust. I know Very you like nice. that color, Angeles. She does. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so that is color four as well. And I think that'd be really, really nice. Really nice. Um, so that is a little rundown of all the things that are new and exciting and uh yeah we're sort of linen tastico oh yeah um and uh we have dick there's still so much to come and like i said we got some lovely mm. new sock books and really nice new books some lovely crochet there's lovely baby baby yes, pattern lovely, crochet yeah. books and stuff some that's really just nice lo books. loaded up onto the website and one on spinning as well and fiber preparation Yay. and all that you can tell our interests our products follow our interests <laughs> very very nicely and if any of you follow stone knits on instagram hmm? I'm, I'm very fond of stone knits <gasps> yeah I mean, I'm, I'm not a huge sock knitter but i love her feed and our cat and we have her book oh, charming brilliant. color work socks oh, and so yeah, if any of you yeah, yeah. follow her or know anything about it we have it that's right. Yeah, Ashling. Ashling is the resident really sock knitter, when we, and when she we is it. dying yeah. to make. In fact, she's got some some yarns already picked out for some yep. of those. So there'll be lots of yep. inspiration coming your way. And um, we will say goodbye, bye, bye, effervescent. Come, come in. This is this is honorary Jenny. Um, is going to come in. See, Jenny is with us all the time. <laughs> so in spirit and in flesh. And so <laughs> <laughs> they were saying here on Saturday, people just came, kept coming up to pet the flesh. Um, so that is uh, kits up on the website right now uh, for pre-order, if you'd like, in three colour options for the effervescent sweater kit. Fluff or no fluff, um, it's up to you. But yeah. I think, look, if you're I if you're going if you're going all if in, going all in, go all in, go all in. Mm. Uh, so thank you so much for uh, joining in with us, um, for watching along, for sticking with us for a whole full hour, um, and we will be back soon. Ooh, ooh, and ooh, possibly ooh. in about two weeks, but uh, we will let you know. We'll always pop, pop yeah. up the countdowns and the reminders and ask for more questions then. Yeah. Um, really appreciate it, and we'll see you really soon. Bye. Bye.